No, no, no! Wizard walk! No! This is bad! This is bad! The, ah, the Queen Charge is in trouble! No! That's really, really bad! Healers are. Wait, the healers. The heal. It's a sneaky goblin walk! Hold the front door. Does he still have this? Drama has ensued here in the Town Hall 12 Cup qualifiers. In the playoffs, we had a whole bunch of teams get disqualified. Let's take a look here and we'll get ready to dive into Defenders versus Bad Singer here in just a moment. They're about to begin. But I want to show you guys something. So we had an impersonating Queen Walkers clan that played against your death in the first round. But one of the players on the team was also onto Rush Town Hall 12. That same player was also on Godlike Esports. He was also on Indian Rampage. And who knows how many other teams. And so all of those teams are getting disqualified. He also had visited other clans like Kuteshi Esports, who also took an auto loss. So five of our 16 teams got a straight up disqualification from the rush.gg tournament but now we need to move on to find out who wins this quarterfinals match between bad singer and defenders and move on to this semifinals match and i assume that since rush godlike and any rampage all had the same player that was playing on the team then uh king clashers would probably get pushed right up in to face death note after the perfect war in that semifinals match so let's get ready to dive in time for the tax to begin and we're off neon will start us off here in this town hall 12 cup tournament in this quarterfinals match all right Bazinger is a pro team by the way so we expect a lot out of them we'll see what they can do today looks like he'll i don't know which player is which here in the mix but he will put an invisibility down to drive his king off to the right the queen will cut off the king and force him around the corner there tessa popped and so he had to make a reactionary play there with that invisibility to correct the pathing of the king to make sure he went the right direction because it looks like he wants him to round around into the eagle artillery so a smart play right there but he should have just popped his king ability to preserve his hp through the defensive king because otherwise that defensive king hits really really hard but he will go all the way in He'll get more Teslas on the inside, and he will secure the Eagle Artillery here to start us off. So a, a clever way to path this king in there, and good value for the king, but he's still coming in opposite of the Town Hall with the Queen Charge, which is usually the best way to do it. Either you charge the Town Hall directly, or you come in completely opposite of the Town Hall. But you don't really want to... You don't really want to charge, like, the top or bottom section on the base like this, Otherwise, it kind of forces your Lalo to come in opposite of the Town Hall and end onto the Town Hall because otherwise you don't have the percentage required to be able to get the Town Hall activation. So this is a smart way because this allows you to clear out the bottom corner and the right-hand corner with a Queen Charge and then engage the Lalo and the troops that cleared out the bottom can meet up with the Town Hall takedown and they can all work together. But this Slammer and the Queen working side by side here as the Slammer will take out that Inferno. Good, good pathing here. And you'll get that sweeper as well as now the Lava Hound will deploy and the Blooms will start into the Town Hall and he is reaching 50% there right as he makes that final push there towards the Town Hall. Looking really, really nice there. The Queen able to clear out the defensive CC without any issues and this Stone Slammer ended up dropping out a Baby Dragon and some Blooms that continue to support the Queen in the middle of the base there. Bloom's able to use that ward ability to get past the Town Hall. So far, so good. Plenty of spell support on the back side of the base here. This looks absolutely crushed there. What a nice attack here from Neon. Able to completely wreck this base with the Queen Charge Lala. Swag the Queen ability. Throw down the remainder of her spells to get easily past this multi-inferno with minimal losses. And that's how you get it done here at Town Hall 12. Love what he did there. Very, very smart attack all the way through. And we'll see if that gives him the lead here because Defenders is an absolute powerhouse of a team. So in case you're confused, what Hamong did was play for multiple teams. The tournament rules said that you're only allowed to be rostered onto one team. So his biggest flaw is being too good, too wanted, <laughs> and then playing on as many teams as he get onto. So <laughs> the most impressive thing that Hamong did is push four teams into the playoffs. There were hundreds of teams that signed up and played. And 
I don't know how many more he was playing on that he didn't make it through the playoffs in, but the fact that he pushed four teams into the playoffs with the hundreds of teams that were signing up and playing in this tournament is honestly really impressive. You, you got to admit, you got you got to give him credit where credit's due. Five teams? Did he get five teams in the playoffs? Okay, some people are saying there are additional teams that he was playing on because he was in the Katesh clan, but I don't know if that he was actually playing. He had accounts in there. I don't know. But either way, to push that many teams in when teams like the Queen Walkers tried every qualifier and couldn't make it through. We had other pro teams like Tribe Gaming try to get in. They didn't make it in. The fact that all of these big name pro teams, like you're literally your number one and two teams that we're in the world championship. They weren't able to make it through, but Hamon got four teams into the playoffs. <laughs> Are we kidding? I mean, I can understand why he had so much demand for people wanting him on his team. You know what I'm saying? But like, <laughs> he had to know he was going to get found out. Like, it's obvious. He's too well known. He's too well known. He <laughs> but to go in with that many teams, four or five, regardless of what it was, to push that many teams in the playoffs is absolute insanity. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting distracted here. Let's focus in on Manic making his way in. The wall wrecker dived into the town hall after the queen. Transition from the top compartment with the wall break to go into the eagle artillery compartment. Clean approach there. Yeti bomb out of the wall wrecker. Probably even had some sneakies in there. Like, you can throw one in uh, two... Two Yetis and a Sneaky Goblin or two into that CC, and you can get some... I think there's one Sneaky Goblin, right? But you can throw that into the Wall Wrecker and easily take the Town Hall down. And he was able to do that, but he missed that Multi on the right side. He's going to have to go back for that. This will be a bit of a problem. He's got a lot of Blooms, but the Haste is carrying the Blooms up that direction. They're going to go back for it now. They get the Haste into it. They're going to get the Strike. The Warden helping out, and the Warden will help him get it down. And they'll go back through the haste here as the queen picks up the tank in the bottom of the haste here. They'll hit the expo. That's working out quite nicely. But he does end up losing them. Warden sticks up at the top of the base there and will finish up the clean up. The queen hanging on for dear life. This one was looking good. But no, it is not going to be a triple. It will be a good percentage though. And that means Bad Singer is going to start this war with the lead. Come on, quit a triple, though. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. Nope, 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 no. Just kidding, just kidding. All right. I thought he's only a triple. 99%. Warden almost comes in clutch and closes it. But Bad Singer still has the lead. So there was a team that was called the Queen Walkers, and it was full of imposters. Hamonk was on that team. He didn't make it through, but I just uh, remembered that the Tribe Gaming team that was trying to make it in was also an impersonator team. So, like, what the heck is going on? This whole Town Hall 12 Cup is completely full of drama. I can't believe it. I've never seen anything like it in Clash of Clans Esports. But now we have... With the lead established, Badzinger making their way in with the Queen missing this Eagle Artillery. And she does uh, put another backup wall breaker on the other side of that compartment. He can use the one wall break to get out of that compartment now after he finishes clearing everything inside. Now, when you're doing a dragon attack with a Queen Charge, we like to do these dragon attacks when the Queen can at least get one air defense and then notice how she, well, she got, she'll get two air defenses eventually, but she wants to get two eventually. But if you have the air defenses spread to the wide outside and you have the Eagle artillery in one compartment opposite of the town hall in the bottom compartment, then what you can do is charge the Eagle artillery with the queen, use the Eagle artillery as a funnel, cut the funnel with the king that'll eventually come in at the bottom of the base here and keep the dragons more central on the base there. And as you can see, the queen cut all the way to the middle of the base there in the eagle artillery compartment. So it keeps the dragons into a tight packing as they make their approach towards the town hall. He's got another wall break and he could use that to wall break the king in 
to go secure the town hall or you could use a blimp protected by the ward ability to sail across and have that secure the town hall takedown but the king will handle the air defense at the bottom of the base here the queen will get forced back out to the outside and go after that last air defense and the dragons rushed the air defense that they were starting next to so very very clean attack here very well executed and very well planned out all the way through so this is clearly a triple the dragons will finish up they got plenty of time and Badzinger will maintain their lead. Nice job. That was clean. But yeah. Um, I wonder how... There weren't a lot of other teams that were impersonated to my knowledge. Like a lot of the popular teams in Town 12. Like uh, Your Death. Ended up... But they were actually the team as you saw there from the bracket. That ended up beating the uh, fake Queenwalkers clan. And they beat him with a perfect war, but then they immediately lost to Death Note. And so Death Note has already moved on to the semifinals up in that top one. And like I said, King Clashes, I assume, will get forced up into the same semifinals as Death Note past these other three teams that were all Hamonks teams that all got disqualified. <laughs> they still played over here, though. They still played. Uh, they, uh, they got disqualified right after everybody found out, after the news broke. So, it's chaos over here, but a triple on the board here, Bad Singer gets it done. Th there had to have been other players that were working with Hamonk, though. Like, he couldn't just do that on his own. I think... Maybe he could have done it with a couple of his accounts, but, like, if he was on any other teams... Because I know he's got, like, 10 Town Hall 12s, which is insane in its own right, right? But if he... If he was on other teams unknowingly to the players, if the players didn't know he was already playing for other teams and he just jumped into other rosters, like that would be kind of, that would be kind of shady. That's where you, uh, like, <laughs> it's all kind of messed up. It's all kind of messed up. But like, if he potentially could have put on other teams at risk, that'd be another story. But I, I assume that most teams that he would have joined into would have been willing participants. You know what I mean? Anybody disagree? I don't know. But he is able to wipe out the core of the base here with the lightning, got out the Inferno, got out the Sweepers, and got a little bit of damage onto the defensive queen as well. Did he get two Infernos? Yes, he got two Infernos. He spanned the lightning to cover both of the Infernos, and then put four lightning onto each of them. But that doesn't leave him a lot of spells here for the next phase of the attack here. So it is going to be a Lalo with two freezes and one haste to carry him through but the heroes are able to secure the town hall so he can at least get the protection of the lalo and the slammer with his warden assisting and he will need the headhunters protected by the ward ability to go in and get the defensive queen down so it is very important not only to get the artillery out of the way early but to protect the headhunters with a very very early ward ability to go in there after that defensive queen and as you can see they get that protection they take her down and now here we go with the Lava Hounds now forward deployed there to come in and collapse in outside defenses, try to keep everything as central as possible and working together here. You don't want any straggling defense. It's very, very important. He's got the freezes. He can tank these infer or he can take the air defense with the remaining hounds and then freeze this inferno into oblivion as he completely overwhelms this base here. Nice zap Lalo. Or Fash. Fa How do you say his name there? Jeta Fash <laughs> How However you say that. I don't know how to say it. But it is crushed. It's crushed. And they are building behind. So they try to fight for survival here. It's kind of fun to have uh, something interesting to talk about while we're in the middle of a war. Uh, it changes it up a little bit there from our usual, right? Was it a skelly donut? Was I that off? What are you used to lighting for then? You the skelly donut on that? Hold on, let me watch that back. I was... I was distracted for a second. But yeah, it, it was a skelly donut. It was a skelly donut, not as lightning. I, I don't know what I was thinking. But pay attention to how they use the skeleton spells here with the rage. A lot of times, I see people throw down the rage and then the invisibility immediately in the same spot, so it's centered. And then they put down the other spells there. But you can see how the invisibility covers all the spots that protects the troops, but it doesn't cover any of those buildings. So very, very, very high value right there. I'm going to grab a screenshot of that because that's kind of cool. That's a big value uh, skelly donut right there. Nice. That was really good. And if you don't know, if you destroy the CC before the troops come out, then the troops that are inside die with it. Over to the side here, Red Baron will make his way in with a queen charge into Lalo. 
Coming with the queen on the bottom side, and I don't know which way she's gonna end up going. It looks like he's banking on her going off to the left here. We'll go to the storage. Okay, 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 okay. She's gonna go to the. Okay, he's fine. He's fine. She'll go to the mortar, and then she'll go south. Didn't really do much to funnel that, but <laughs> he mapped it out good. Well, good, good and well, and he will get the funnel down south to drive the queen through the opening the wall. She probably won't go to the town hall, and he'll probably need some extra support on the outside of the base here. So I feel like the king is gonna need to come in and start to work down at this army camp and collapse in. If he could snipe off this archer tower, then he could actually get the king to go in and assist at the eagle artillery. And maybe potentially draw the queen into the town hall compartment a little bit tighter. But that inferno there is going to be a little bit of a nuisance. I wonder what he does here. Need to see him play. The sweeper knocking his healers back there. The king does deploy south. And does he cut it off at the... At the arch tower? Or does he just let the king take that damage? He should. He just throw a balloon onto it. He can take it out there with one balloon. Not sure why he's not. Tess is popping. Queen engages the defensive queen and the eagle artillery with the rage. He'll get both of those down. King still has his ability, but got stalled up on some grass skillies. The wizard worker with the king is going to go ahead and pick up that that uh, wizard tower. And his healers are all over the place here. The, oh, no, no, no. Wizard walk. No, this is bad. This is bad. The, ah, the queen charge is in trouble. No. That's really, really bad. The queen does go down and the wizard goes down. And now, oh no. Why did you do that, wizard? That's bad. <laughs> and now defenders has a chance because I don't think he's going to go through anymore. He'll throw the haste down, but he doesn't have any pathing into this inferno. He throws the freeze down, but he meant to drop in balloons over there, so that is another problem. And his only chance to recover it is now wiped out as he swags that freeze. But maybe the warden can turn back and get this inferno down. Like, it's the bomb tower. Healers are. Wait, the healers. The heal. It's a sneaky goblin walk. Hold the front door. Does he still have this? Healers are gonna tank. Warden takes out the inferno. Get this, get this arch tower down. Warden locks onto it. No way. No way. What? He got it. <laughs> you are kidding me. You are. You are kidding me. What the heck? <laughs> you can't make this up. We got super witches coming for the next one. Much uh, lightning. What do you use on the... What do you use for the lightning here? Take out the Inferno, I assume? Yeah. Yeah, Inferno got some damage on the Queen. Rather than going for the Arch Tower, opted to put the damage on the Queen, but he still gets the Arch Tower down. He just had to be patient there for a minute, but he gets the Warden Walk moving. The Warden will quickly connect. Now, very, very important. Every time you do these Zap Smash attacks here, whether you're doing Super Witches or a P.E.K.K.A. Smash or whatever, if we're going to Zap this out, then we have to have the warden clear everything from the edge of the base so we have a clean funnel. Now the warden will automatically follow the next troops that drop. But if you're doing a warden walk, make sure that you don't drop more than... You don't drop any stack of 20 troops base or higher next to that warden while you're trying to clear the trash. Otherwise, the warden will start to follow their targeting. The threshold is 20 troops base. So as you, you can put like a yeti down, but don't put a yeti in a wizard. You can put down... A baby dragon, but don't put a baby dragon two balloons. Be conscious of controlling your warden walks there, and you can set this attack up nicely. You need about a level 30 or higher queen to make that work. The the king over the right side deploys with one super witch out there as everybody else gets ready to jump into the core of the base to go after the eagle artillery, but with the funnel so tight, the healers are onto the super witches, keeping them all alive there with the rage. And once they get through this high damage area, they can coast for a while before he has to use his next rage. Although he might use it because this still is a high damage area as he goes into the defensive warden. And he already used a ward ability. Luckily, the witches, when they're not inside of a rage, actually move so slow that they can't get hit by the Town Hall Blast. 
So that is something you can use to your advantage if you don't rage as you actually take the town hall itself down. Now he rages as he comes out of the town hall. Engage the defensive queen. Big boys lead the charge up there towards her. Witches step in, take the shots, take her down. And you get the seagull artillery finally off of his back here. A witch over the right side is going to pick up where the king left off and keep on moving along that outside right flank. 46 seconds to go. Here comes the stone slammer. We've got to remind ourselves that in this tournament, they are not allowed to receive any donations from anybody other than Town Hall 12s in these level 1 clans. Even if a monk's on the team or not, they cannot receive a Siege Bricks because that is not available at Town Hall 12. They cannot receive a Flame Flinger, a Log Launcher, and clearly they can't receive a battle drill because that can only be donated to town 13 or higher anyways but this one is very very close on time he needs to close this out he's got the sneaky goblins coming in the back side here to try to get it done a little bit faster he'll get the cannon down but he is gonna have enough time and defenders will stay close here right behind bad singer and keep this war very close imagine if you were playing through the qualifier and then you find out later on that your team was knocked out by Hamonk. And then Hamonk got a disqualifier. Or dis like, if you were, like, let's say you were in the last round to make it into the playoffs, and the team that you had to get through was one of the four teams that he helped get through. Imagine. Imagine. I don't... Maybe he didn't think... Maybe he played on that many not thinking that he was going to end up qualifying four teams. But, I mean, after you qualify the first one, you, he should have just stopped... He should have stopped qualifying teams, you know? Like, he could have, if he was going to do that, he could have done a lot smarter. Like, if he's going to scam, if he's going to try to scam the tournament, he could have <laughs> at least stopped qualifying teams after the first. Because the further you make that go on, the higher the chances that you're going to get caught. Because maybe you could slip, maybe you could play on multiple teams earlier into the qualifiers and you could slide under the radar. But you can't do that forever. You, you can't. <laughs> Obviously, when you take four teams in the playoffs, you're putting every single one of them at risk. Well, sorry. Okay, we're, we're, we're distracted on the dragon attack here. Well, these dragons are, are doing fine, though. He's got the heroes working on the outside of the base there. The e drags for in the funnel. Heroes just picking up on the backside. We'll get in there and get these air defenses down. And a freeze will hold that air defense at bay until the queen can get to it. But with the... Did he even have to fight a CC there? I don't even know if he had to fight a CC. But either way, if you can get this expo down, he is 100% going to lock in this triple. And that means Badseer not going to give it up on this one unless somehow this gets stopped. But the dragons are going down. The ward is still alive. The king surges forward with all of his barbarians. No splash damage left on the base here. And he can just walk out into the backside of the base. The dragons will get it done here. Nice call with a dragon attack on this base. And an interesting one. Usually you don't see dragons without lightning, right? Usually dragons are either done with bats on the backside or with or with a lightning, a bunch of lightning to take out some some air defenses and infernos. But all rages, get it done. And honestly, if I was using that many rages, I probably would have opted for electro dragons. At least got found out before we got into the final day and we can at least have a strong semifinals and grand finals you know what i mean because it would be a shame to to have a team get disqualified at that stage of the tournament we don't want that we got hunter coming in with a dragon attack here now this is typically how we see the dragon attacks used where we have the dragons use the lightning as a funneling point there. And then we have less spell support for the actual dragons. Because dragons, they don't need a ton of spell support. Where you need the spell support for them is while you're fighting off the defensive queen. Like right there. And obviously you need to secure the town on takedown. But what's he going to do for the town on takedown? He puts in some rocket boons to the right side of the base there to go pick up that air defense on the right side. Able to get it. Just as soon as he had something else uh, getting targeted, he just slips it in there. The dragons will secure the town takedown. Freeze at that. He needs a heal spell in the middle of the base there as he goes through the Inferno. And he still holds onto the Stone Slammer. And honestly, might be able to swag the Stone Slammer. But ideally, he just puts it onto the Eagle Artillery here. 
Unless the heroes... Oh, there's the big Tesla farm on the backside. He does finally secure the town hall. Took him a minute to get that down. Okay, Dragon's with it out here. He definitely does need the Soul Summer. Can't swag it. Can't swag it! But he did destroy the CC. And he has an extra poison here. And he has an extra lightning. So I wonder if it was a Lava Hound on defense. But he destroyed the CC before the CC came out and caused any problems. If it wasn't a Lava Hound and it was something else, then he just burned through with Dragons and the Rage. But either way... If it's headhunters and they go after the warden or something, then you have that lightning that you can use. That I don't know why he brought that many lightning. Usually you don't bother with the dragon attack there to bring extra lightning. But he does have the dragon down south there, clearing up the bottom corner. And I guess more dragons coming up to the right side. I didn't see that one over there. And it looks like he'll drop out another dragon inside of his CC. And wrap back over to this inferno. He's got the triple. And then I'll put some pressure into Badzinger. If Badzinger triples and goes perfect, then they will move on to the semifinals, but if they miss, then we are going to give a chance here to defenders, but they played nicely. They missed one building. That's all that's holding them back here from advancing to the semifinals. Picture it now. Million view video. Massive controversy. Huge drama. Cheating scandal. On top of this very, very nice war. <laughs> Like, we could have asked for much more than this. <laughs> this this, uh, this video will easily get a million views, right? Troll will make his way into the top of the base here with a queen charge into Lalo. The king will immediately have his wall breaker die on the outside. Was it a spring trap that hit it? It must have been a spring trap. So he does not get access into the expo. She definitely wanted. Okay. All right. The base is very open here, though. Interesting base design. But if Troll is able to triple this, then he will put it out of reach here. For defenders and lock in their perfect war. But we got the CC deployed now with a double poison. One poison for the rocket balloons. One poison for the super minions. Queen taking a lot of damage! Oh, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Heal is getting targeted. Heal is getting hit by the Expo. That Expo is going to do a lot of damage. He does throw down the jump and drives the Queen not to the Town Hall, but over to the Inferno. Where is she going to go? Where is she going to go? Heal is taking an absolute beating. The healers are dropping fast. He starts burning freezes. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. Town Hall's not activated. Town Hall's not activated. No one, sir. Oh, rip. Okay, okay. Okay, you know what? Just get past the town hall. Send the slammer. Oh, the slammer's in at the bottom. <laughs> no, troll! He gets in the headhunters, pops the ward ability. He's gonna have to somehow keep this alive and go back for the town hall. He rages up, freezes up, drives in two balloons. Or three balloons. Is it two or three? I don't know, but they survive and they take the town hall down inside of that warden aura and survive. Queen breaks through the wall on the opposite side of the base there, gets into that inferno. No way. No way. He's pulling through. Queen takes the inferno. Air defense and Tesla's in the back side of the base here. It's coming down to the wire. But if he leaves up even one building, the defenders can come back and take this win. 58 seconds. All air targeting defenses are down. No way did he just pull that back that is one of the most insane town hall 12 recoveries i think i've ever seen and that's the perfect war and badzinger is moving on to the semifinals sly fp will start us off here for 12 monkeys starting with a skelly donut to take out the inferno the sweeper and the CC. And we'll dive in his heroes in from the left side of the base and make his way into this town hall. I guess the king will take the town hall. The queen gets pulled in as well. The ground scale is drew her attention. Well, that's not what he wanted. That's a little problem right out of the gate here. Gets in a headhunter to get through the defensive king a little bit easier, but he pretty much had it under control anyways with all the damage output from his king and queen right there. Nice if he had a wall break here, but the king will break the wall here pretty quickly. Unfortunately, his queen does get targeted by the expo. So that's a little bit of a nuisance, but he'll go ahead and start in the Lala from the top of the base there. Here comes the headhunters to go after the defensive queen. 
And hopefully his heroes can just survive at the bottom and still pick up some value. They could potentially get that Inferno down at the bottom if the Queen can just stay alive for a little while longer. But he does get the defensive Queen down. The Bloons, they'd have to backtrack to that expo that the Queen was in charge of. But it does give him some nice pathing into the Inferno. He does take advantage of it and throws down the haste. More Bloons in for the right side. Slammer's still moving strong. The Queen did die out, but at least she... Oh, look at these Bloons. Nice Bloons. Oh, there's the Tornado. Wait, ah, oh, didn't get the crash damage onto it. Uh, he's got a skeleton spell here. I assume that the skeleton spell was supposed to go down with the queen to get her additional value in that top compartment. So I'm not sure what his plan for it is now. He's got the couple freezes though and the freeze up the sweeper to stop himself from getting knocked back. But only really the minion was getting knocked back there. So it wasn't really a problem. Go and freeze up this Inferno and freeze up the Wizard Tower with it. A couple of Bloons come in and south with a Super Barbarian and a Skeleton Spell. And it looks like he's got it under control. So clearly you don't need his Queen to go off separate from the King. Still got the value. You can put them together. In fact, a lot of times uh, at Tower 12 and lower, the King and the Queen typically go in together. It is a little bit more rare to see them come in separate. At Tower 13 and higher, we typically try to split them up to go after their own compartments because they're a lot stronger. Trolls is live. Kenny is his account name here. And I've been playing with Kenny for years. In fact, a lot of these Peep and Tom guys I've been playing with for years. Same with Hamonk. We always usually play together, which is... <laughs> man. We're just, we're just missing a few of the crew there to have our normal Town Hall 12 lineups, right? <laughs> But yeah, 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 yeah. Who are we missing? We're missing um, Jaunty. And I'm trying to think of who else we're missing right now. Aqui, Aqui, gotta have Aqui on the team, obviously. But yeah, you throw, uh, you throw me, Kenny, Hemonk, Hitesh, Jaunty, and Aqui on a team, and we're an unstoppable force. That, we, we, if we all play together, we would win it all. But Hitesh, he wanted to play on everybody's team, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that's our, that's our, uh, that's our god mode team for Town 12. All right, anyways. <laughs> uh, Kenny making his way in towards, or gets the Town Hall takedown with the Super Witches. No issues with that. He's got a jump spell to get in the back of the base. Still has another rage, so if he needs the extra healing output, he has it available. And honestly, right here would be a good spot to throw it down. There's a jump spell to carry him through. And also the ward ability as well. I don't know that you need to use the warden and the rage together with super witches. It's great to pair it together for attacks that don't have the healers, but whatever. He's got plenty of force here. Kenny picks this one up. Easy done. Replace Aqui and take you instead. Okay, we'll, we'll take Chessence instead. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Today's too good. Today's too good. But a triple here for Peep and Tom, and we're all tied up. Like, like, how many other teams is Hamonk playing for? I know he plays for my team a lot, but like, I feel like, I feel like he just goes out there and plays for everybody, and I didn't have him all to myself. Like, I don't even know what he's. It's destroying my whole world right now because I've been playing with Hamonk for years. Hamonk for the streets? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Oh boy. All right. Well, anyways, uh, Blizzard coming in here with a with a landing on top of the Inferno there, able to take it down. No issues with that, and walks into the Town Hall compartment, gets that Expo down as well. Gets the Town Hall not activated. But that's okay. He's got a lot of uh, the base cleared in that area. The Queen will now collapse in the bottom with an Ice Golem to go after the remaining of the defenses and clear out these Teslas. Uh, Bloom comes down to help support through the Teslas, and he definitely needs it right there. But the King's going to work backwards to go join in with the Queen, and they can make their way together towards the Town Hall takedown. And wall break into the Inferno. Looking good here. But the baby dragon out on that right flank there did a lot of work, but it's now going to get shot down. Here comes the next wall break going all the way in and arrives to give him access into the town hall. But I don't think the king wants the town hall. He goes north and picks up the inferno. Can he get the queen to jump the wall? Come on, queen, jump the wall. Okay, he saw, he saw the queen. He's circling around. Oh, my God. Oh, 
my hero value. Frees up the defensive queen. He has an opportunity. He's not going to waste it. He gets the queen down, although he has all the headhunters coming in now. And honestly, with all those headhunters now protected by the ward ability, he's going to have them potentially save the queen. No, the queen's going down. Okay, she, she survived for a little bit there, but... At least the king's out of the way, so it's not going to mess up his queen. A bunch of the balloons had to turn back for a cannon up at the top of the base there, so that's going to slow down their final approach in the Inferno. But a couple of freezes will lock that Inferno down. That is absolutely crushed there. Nice Blizzard Lalo making those Super Wizards invisible and raging them up there to wipe out that entire area around the Blimp Drop. Made that one look easy. Amsterdam is live! We got Jokum coming in for the Dutch Beast. Playing out of Peep and Tom. I uh, got a clean access into the defensive queen, but he's going to need... Okay, this is going to be tricky here. This is going to be tricky because he's got a jump spell. He clearly wants to drive the queen at the town hall here. He has to go through an inferno to get there. Lots of incoming damage here. Which uh, super minion and a couple of rocket balloons, but he does invest the freeze and it gets through so why these end up so tricky is usually the queen never makes a direct approach when she comes in from a corner like this she's either going to split off to one inferno or the other so the problem that that causes is you're going to end up dragging your healers through the inferno that she doesn't go to same with the air defenses on his flanks, but I think he'll be fine with the air defenses. I think they're in a okay position, but she is veering off to the left side. Maybe that was a plan. Maybe he thought he could just split off to the left side and then jump his way in. But he wall broke out the left and right side of the options that the queen could have taken. So now as the queen makes her way forward, he has a wall break to go to the inferno. And now we can jump back to the other inferno. Okay. All right, Jokum, this is looking good. Now have the king go to the outside of the base and clear out the arch towers out there. Make sure the queen doesn't get any funny ideas and attack any walls and try to leave. But a jump would be nicely put down now. Yep, now the queen can make her way back to the town hall and her approach to that other inferno is clean. That is a very, very caught, nice clean approach here. The queen gets caught in the tornado trap. Luckily, her healers don't get pulled into. She gets... Suck on that little piece of wall and doesn't get spun around. You will secure the town hall takedown without any drama. The queen will step over and get the inferno down. No issues with that. He'll have the slammer make its way across the bottom of the base and work with the Lalo there. Still has a ward ability, but I don't even think he needs the ward ability. This is looking so absolutely crushed. He goes ahead and uses the freeze. His warden is sticking back a little bit anyways. He doesn't want to play. He doesn't need the warden. He throws down the baby dragon on the right side, but at this point of the war, we have to make sure that since everybody's tripled so far, you're teasing a potential perfect war start or double perfect war start. So anything that you can do to save time at this point here is going to be valuable if it ultimately comes down to that. We haven't seen one the entire Town Hall 12 tournament, but there's no time like the present. The chances that Hamonk got that many players to play with him that were not willing participants of his shenanigans or were not also taking part in running multiple accounts themselves to play alongside him is very unlikely. I would I would be extremely surprised if he was alone in his ventures there. But he's just he's just the one taking the brunt, okay? It, it's it's probably it's probably a whole team of Hamonks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways, uh, Todd Apple will make his way in with a warden walk, or me, a queen walk to just quickly break the base into half. Very interesting base here, though. Very open base design, so if the queen goes in, then he's going to be an okay spot, but he doesn't decide to wall break it right there. He just goes ahead and walks in the open corner and will send in a couple balloons to go control that air defense. Gets it down with the raged up balloon. One shots it. And clears any black bombs out in front of the queen. Did he lose any healers there? He might have lost a healer. That's okay. He can manage that. Wall break was for the king, not for the queen. And we'll push the queen through the town hall. 
I'm uh, really interested to see how he handles these infernos across the middle of the base here. Like, on a base like this, what is the right call? I, a lot of times I would say dragons on a base like this. To, like, do a queen charge dragon. Obviously, the queen charge is a surefire way to take a base like this down. To have a chance at it. Because you need to have her clear out one wing of the base. But it looks like he's getting ready for the stone slammer to go in towards the middle. The queen will cut the pathing and drive the stone slammer in. He had the blue down in front of it. And he will get his approach. And he will secure the... Oh, there's the first black bomb. And the defensive queen is standing up ahead here. And he's to use the warden and get past the defensive king with his headhunters. This is going to be tricky. He does lock onto the king first. And rocket balloons come out. Pop the ward ability as the rocket balloons try to chase his, head, his headhunters down. He got two of the Infernos out of the middle of the base there, but left up one. Queen is still alive and hanging in just fine. She has her ability to protect, but she did lose all but one of her healers over there, so she's a bit vulnerable. Ooh, we might be in trouble here. Got one freeze. This freeze has to be coming in clutch here, but the Queen getting a little bit of HP recovered here. She can maybe get in there, get the Arch Tower down, and force everybody back into the middle base here. Honestly, it would be worth it to go ahead and make those buildings invisible and have the... The balloons go directly to the Inferno, but he doesn't. He just freezes, and there's the invisibility. Protect the balloons on the approach. That will do the trick there. Ward is supporting, and it's a triple. Another one on the books here. 12 monkeys picking another one up. And my goodness, we got some good wars today. Baby Tom is live with a Queen Charge into Lalo. Baby Dragon will form the funnel on the right side, and the Queen will get ready to charge the Eagle Artillery. Looks like she can go into the artillery, delaying her healers until she gets his air defense down so he can deploy his healers down south. But be careful if you're going to deploy them down south. You got to make sure to not deploy them in the archer tower range. Oh, man. All right. All right. All right. Rage up. He'll get that archer tower down before he loses his healer, I think. And a wall break will get him in. Nope. The healer goes down. Okay. Lost the healer. Little bit of a mistake there, but it is only one of his healers. He's got plenty of backups. Well, any more healers. He can still manage this just fine. He gains the defensive queen. Here comes the CC. Baby Dragon and Bloom's down south. Working with the king. Headhunter with the king. Get the defensive king down. Clearing the way here for his queen to hug the walls there tight. Now, what's interesting is if he wall breaks just below where the queen is standing right now. Because he has the Eagle Artillery compartment cleared. And the sweeper is on the inside. He can wall break into the sweeper and do an internal wall break and get the queen to transition over to that inferno. Potentially, if he wants to. But it looks like he's going to go ahead and send in the stone slammer to go and directly target that inferno and get ready to approach the town hall. Now, as we typically see with these queen charges, if we're going to have the... We want to have the queen take out a chunk of the base there and come in like at the Eagle Artillery as a priority and then Lalo through the Town Hall. But we gotta make sure that we have enough of the base there for the Lalo to actually engage and take down so we can get the Town Hall activated when we get to 50%. But there is a lot of, since it's an anti two-star base and there's so much on the top side, it is giving him a little trouble there. He loses all of his balloons up top there into the Multi-Inferno, but the rest of the pack there is gonna head that direction. Like a lot of damage there from that Town Hall Blast. The Multi is not helping any with that issue but he's still gonna get his queen through the wall there freeze up the backside lock up that wizard tower to protect the pack from the splash damage the splash damage is more dangerous with these balloons being at so low hp after taking the tunnel blast with the red air bombs combined with the wizard tower he's uh, be close here. Lo looks like he loses his queen. He needs to get the wizard on the left side wizard on the left side pull the sneak or pull the healers into taking position Ward is still working 28 seconds. This is still not done Sneak Goblin pulls the healers right into the position where they clear all the traps and he's got a chance there with this baby dragon in the board and they can finish the base. Baby dragon's still at good HP, keeping the pack alive here. Ward is still moving. Get this archer tower down. Come on, close it, close it. Warden, it's up to you. Warden, step in. Wizard helping. Take it down. Oh, baby, it's a triple. We remain tied up. Peeping Tom gets another one on the board. Mafton is live with a dragon attack here. We have a bunch of lightning coming to the left side to go after that air defense. More lightning in the middle to take out the sweeper. 
And I assume he's coming in through the top corner or the Eagle Artillery. He's got a wall wrecker here. And the defenses around the town hall are mostly cleared. So honestly, he could charge the top of the base here and he could not have to worry about black air bombs by using the wall wrecker the same way that you use a blimp to go and secure the town hall takedown. If on top of that, carrying a dragon with some sneaky goblins, that he had the dragon hang out in the area and maybe pick up some extra value. We'll see what's in there. Looks like sneaky goblins, sneaky goblins, sneaky goblins, tornado trap though. Ooh, okay, okay he's, still, he's still gonna get the tunnel down. And the warden will protect the dragons as they surge to the top of the base there. Here comes some rocket plumes out of the defensive CC with some super minions. Not a problem there. He'll quickly make quick work of them. And his heroes were not the ones that had the rocket plumes go to them. It went to the sneaky goblins. So the dragons picked them off quickly as they worked their way back across the base there. No issues with that. Heal in the middle as he has the dragons into a little bit of a grouping. They're not a huge pack, but that'll give them some extra HP as they drive into these multi-infernos. Hero still looking healthy. King has half of his HP after his ability was used. Where's his queen? Oh, queen's over there on the right. I see her now. Got some rocket balloons to pick off the left side uh, outside defenses. So one more rocket balloon here. Dragon dies down south here as he tries to get that Inferno. Dragon's up on the left side there, working to clear out all these cannons. That's good value. The Queen of Popper ability. Okay, he needs to be patient here. He needs to be very, very patient. He drops in a regular balloon down south to go take out this Arch Tower, and it will potentially have no time to get it. It looks like it does. He puts in the Rocket Blue to go assist the Queen. Gets the Inferno down. All right, good patience there, and good tactical use of the Rocket Blues all around the base there. And he had a lot of them. They proved invaluable in this attack and he will get the triple and the time on that one was very very fast so as we log another triple and keep perfect on both sides we need to start thinking about average attack time and right now 12 monkeys leads that by a significant margin gotta keep it perfect gotta keep it fast keeping tom will strike next here and as we go into these final attacks here, it's important to note that 12 monkeys is the first to go. So, Peeping Tom may be forced to do a very, very fast attack to have a chance to win this, which may ultimately be a dragon or an electro dragon attack that would have to be super, super fast. They may be forced to take that risk Depending on the speed of Sumio here, but first and foremost, they got to get the triple here. But with their large time advantage right now, Peep and Tom can do a slower attack here with these queen charges. And if they get the triples and they can keep the time fast, then we'll see what happens from there. Wait, which team has the time? Wait, 12 monkeys has the time advantage. So, you know what? Maybe Peep and Tom. Not okay, I, I was mixed up there. 12 Monkeys has the time advantage. So Peep and Tom has to go fast. Or they just need to make sure they get the triples and then they can just bank on a defense. Because the fact that we've made it this, through, this far through the war here and had no defenses is kind of rare here at Town Hall 12. Very, very exceptional hit rates. But he needs to get the Queen to take the turn and go south. She's still attacking the wall there and he needs to get off of it. So he needs to get that sweeper down or at least clear out some of the buildings in there. Okay, queen. Okay, queen. Okay, okay, queen. Okay, queen. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, she's heading back south. He puts in the slammer off on the left side and will support the miners. And once again, if you guys didn't know, they are not allowed to receive any siege machines that they cannot make themselves. So they're limited to wall wrecker blimp and stone slammer so that's why they used the stone slammer instead of like a siege barracks or a lot of the other more beneficial siege machines that work well in this attack but this is looking good here and look at the time as well like normally these attacks are kind of slow but this one's moving quite nicely i mean it's gonna take him a minute to get to this last corner there's a lot of damage here he's not out of this yet warden's still working with him though 
Wiz is chasing down some air skillies. Balloon's helping out and get some crash damage in the area. The miners are going to survive and they will finish off the rest of the defenses with about 30 seconds to spare. But that doesn't give them the time advantage. That is still slower than the average attack time of 12 monkeys. But at least they're tripling. And now we come down to the final exchange. 12 monkeys. If they triple here, the chances the Peeping Tom catches on time is very low. Here we go. The war can effectively be ended right here, but the last attacker will have to be, remain very, very conscious of the status of his attack here. So he has time to change before his attack window because he'll have a very, very short time to switch his army if necessary. Because if this fails, then he just needs to get a triple and they can win or beat the percentage of it. But if it triples, he may be forced, regardless of whether the base is good for it or not, to throw in a fast attack like Electro Dragons and pray that it has a chance to go through. But a Blizzard here sets this up, taking out the Town Hall, pulls the CC, fights the CC in relative safety with an Ice Golem out, providing the tanking, even throws in a couple of blues to go pick up this defensive Grand Warden statue while the King is tanking it. Smart play right there. Get some traps cleared in the area as well. Catches the tornado trap. Get out of the way nice and early. Queen hanging in here just fine. King's going to break the wall and go out to that air defense. The Queen needs to get this arch tower off of her back. She doesn't. At least she's not taking damage from it anymore. Tries to do a wall break over on that other side, but the wall breaker goes all the way in the middle. <laughs> I think maybe he's trying to get the wall breaker to travel through the compartment that he's in and wall break him out the other side. But that didn't work. The king does break the wall though, and they are out, and the queen is still alive without any damage on her at the moment. But he'll freeze up the multi inferno. Looking good here. Looking good. Single inferno in the right hand corner of the base. Freeze up the multi. Big Tesla's are popping. Oh, there's a problem. There's a problem. There's a problem in the middle of the base there. Watch the middle of the base. Big Tesla farm giving him trouble. He's going to miss the inferno. Queen and King are going to get burned up. He frees it again. Bloons are coming back in. They're going to get it. They got the Inferno down. The Bloons are swarming. 12 monkeys with the perfect war will now force the fast triple out of Peepin' Tom. And oh my God, is it going to have to be fast because this one was also very fast. And I don't know if they have any chance here. They're going to have to set a world record on a Town Hall 12 I assume Electro Dragons is their only chance. But this one, every second is precious here. For Peeping Tom. As his attack continues to go on. And oh, that'll give him a little more time here. They go all the way down to the bottom of the base here. So every second is precious. This army camp staying standing may be a glimmer of hope. Let's see if they can pull back the time. 14 seconds on average attack time to make up for. And here we go. Go? Uh oh. Passing this attack window. Come on. Uh. He is he. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he's changing his army real quick there. All right. Here we go. Here we go. It's got to be fast. Electro Dragons will strike for the final attack as expected. And honestly, this base has a lot of compact areas around the edges. You can get some good value out of the E Drags. He may need to come in opposite of the town hall. He decides to come in on the left flank, but he needs to start the drags right away there. No time to delay. No time to set funnels. Just spam and send it right through the town hall takedown. Sweepers are facing off to the left and right side. The king and queen deploy on the right side. Need to get as much damage output as quick as possible. It is all about speed. Caution to the wind. And just get through this base as fast as possible. With the Town Hall takedown, e drags are going to end up going to the Eagle Artillery by the looks of it. He gets the funnel on the left side there. They do get into the core. Rage up again. Oh, he's moving fast. He's looking good. This is not a bad way to make his way through. e drags going to get stalled up on some air skellies in the middle of the base there. That's unfortunate. But they will get to that Inferno. More e drags go to the other Inferno top here. One minute is approaching. Needs to keep it under two minutes, and we know that that will put him close. One minute and a half would guarantee it. We're gonna get this inferno down on the right side here. Get the chains to get the sweeper down. Good, good, good. Queen will pick up the air defense on the back side. E Drags is starting to thin out though. Oh man, oh man, oh man. This is why E Drags struggle at Town Hall 12 and lower. 
It's had all 12 and 11 because you don't have something like a Royal Champion sweep out the backside. So he'll throw in the Rocket Blues on the left side here. And he's starting to slow down too much. E Drags are dying out. They don't have a lot of HP pool. They do die out rather quickly. And unfortunately, it was not looking too bad there. He tried it the best he could. He didn't have a choice. His hand was forced. It is a defense. But if he got through, that would have been insane. He was on pace for it. Nice try. But it looks like 12 monkeys is advancing to the semifinals.